God. That's all. You, that, that, that's really what you need to know is have faith in God. No matter what your circumstance that you're going through today, no matter what it looks like, as we said earlier when we were praying for people, no matter what the doctor report says, have faith in God. No matter what the election looks like, have faith in God. Now, we're coming up on this, and let me encourage you to please, if you don't know who you're voting for yet, uh, you should know. <laughs> but if you, if you don't know yet, check out. You can go to Bro, uh, Brother Copeland's um, uh, website, and uh, kcm.org, and uh, look up Faith of the Nations on there, and you can see the different parties' platforms. They've got the Democratic platform, the Republican platform, and the Libertarian platform. And uh, look at those. They're several pages long. But I'm telling you, that's the problem with people. They don't know what the platforms are. Now, I'm not doing a political message this morning, but I'm just kind of exhorting you because the election is uh, this Tuesday. Okay? Um, keep me in prayer because on Tuesday I will not be home. <laughs> I'm working with the election committee, praise God. So uh, from a quarter to six in the morning to about ten o'clock that night, I won't be home. Uh, I'll, be help, I'll be helping them. So... Uh, Keep me covered. <laughs> it's going to be a big day. Praise God. So um, we've done all this training and all that stuff, and it's uh, it's something else, man. I'm telling you, you learn a whole lot, though. You learn a whole lot. And uh, don't believe everything you see on social media. Does somebody put that out there? <laughs> don't believe everything you see on social media about this. Have faith in God. Amen. Amen. Have faith in God. That's where my faith is. Praise God. And uh, I'm not going to get into all the stuff, but glory to God, we're going to talk about this morning's message. Hallelujah. So, um, you receive grace for your salvation when you use faith in God. Let me say that again. You receive grace for salvation when you use faith in God. Faith is the spiritual creative force of God that's inside your born-again spirit. For your faith to work, are you ready? You should know this. For your faith to work, you have to trust God. For your faith to work, let me say it again. For your faith to work, you must trust God. Brothers and sisters, we, we, can, we, can, um, we can blab it all day. We can sing all the praise and worship songs and come in here on Sunday morning, lift our hands, jump up and down, shout, scream, run the building. But if you don't, see, I, I've, I've been in this thing too long. I'm sure you have too. I've been in this thing too long. It's called lip service. <laughs> you see a lot of people with lip service, but they don't actually believe what they're saying. Now we learned last week about how faith works. Praise God. But you can't give God lip service. That's not how faith is created. Faith is created when you trust God. Trusting in Him. Trusting Him for what His Word says. And uh, when you believe this B-I-B-L-E, praise God, and everything in it, that's it. When, when, whenever, uh, well, let's use healing. When he said, by his stripes I'm healed, that's it. Amen. I'm not going to receive anything else. Don't care what the doctors say. I care what they say. You know what? They're, 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 they're not liars. Because uh, what's hiding is they're reading what the devil has put on you. <laughs> Notice that's, that's the enemy's report. That's not God's report. And, and, and the book of Isaiah says that I'm going to believe. Whose report shall we believe? We believe the report of the Lord. That's my, the doctor's got a report. Well, I've got a report. Amen? Uh, the, 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 that bank statement I get, it's a report. Well, the bank statement's got, the bank's got a report, but I've got a report. Praise God. 
And um, we're going through, if you're going through a, a, a relationship problems and, and things like that, there's a report out there, but God's got a report. Relationships, your body, your finances can be and are really under the covenant are healed. It's up to us to it's up to us to believe it. And, and Karen, I've been through this. I, I know what it's like to so you, you hear it and, and you hear it and you hear it and and, and but it's got to get on the inside of you. And just, just like we talked about earlier this morning when we were doing the uh, the. Uh, the the uh, Keith Moore series again as your pastor I encourage you to be here <laughs> you don't know what you're missing that's why it's important to be church because you miss out on 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 what's being said what's being taught by the Holy Ghost Amen I don't lay on my couch and just do my thumbs like I'll preach Sunday. No, I'm in, I'm in study. I'm in the prayer closet. That's right. Listening for God's voice. I, I almost missed the veterans thing. <laughs> Friday morning, Karen and I was up. We get up between 5.30 and 6. And uh, we're, we're in the prayer closet, man. And, and we're praying away, you know. We're in there and we're, we're praying and we're believing. We're doing our uh, confession, our, our scriptures, praying over our congregation and... And uh, I just happened to look up the clock, and I went, it was it was 8.30. Well, the, the, the event starts at 9. I totally forgot about it, because I got caught up in, 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 in prayer. And I told Carol, oh, no. I said, I'm supposed to be at the prison at 9 o'clock. Well, I'm still in my pajamas. I hadn't even took a shower yet. But I made it. <laughs> Glory to God. I broke some laws, but I made it. Hallelujah. Especially on a especially on on a curvy winding road, get to the prison, amen. Glory to God. I just thought I was at Pocono or something in, in NASCAR. Praise God. This is what it feels like. <laughs> no, <laughs> but we got there. Praise God. And um, and the, the glorious thing was, I was the last one they let in. They said after you, nobody else gets in. And my name wasn't even on the list to get in. My Colonna's name wasn't on the list. They got in and, and praise God, thankfully, the guard there knew who I was. And when I got there, they said, okay, it's you, Pastor, so you, you can go ahead and come in. But you're the last person going in. I said, so anybody else that showed up late after that? And there was. They didn't get in. Praise God. So thank you, Jesus. But I'm not laying around just, just thinking, what can I preach? No, I'm, 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 I'm in the prayer closet. Every day, every day, <laughs> y'all hear me? Every day, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm in a prayer call of God, give me a word from heaven that will minister to our congregation. Praise God. So, so that, that's why I'm. That, that's why I do what I do, and that's why when I get that word from heaven, if He ain't here, you miss it. Now, y'all are here, so of course I'm not preaching to you. So. <laughs> and thank you. Thank y'all that are faithful, that come. We appreciate that. And, and it really means a lot to us, praise God. That, that you, cause, cause you got, I'm telling you, man, we got people, and, and, I, and, and now you got to understand this, you got to understand people's jobs and their work. I know what it's like. And I know Stacy has to deal with this with her job. It is. I know what it's like. When I was leading praise and worship, <clears throat> and I worked third shift at the time. I was working for, this is before Shaw Industries. I've told you the testimony about Shaw when we were doing 12-hour shifts at Shaw. And I walked in, I said, this ain't going to work, man. Because either of these rotating things, I'd have to miss three Sundays. And I said, no, this can't happen. And I said, uh, this has got to change. I love working for Shaw. But praise God, this, is, this has got to change. And, and uh, me and a group of other Christians got together because they didn't want to work. Well, they like going to church too. And I said, well, the Bible says where two or three of us uh, uh, touch anything in agreement, it'll be established. I said, why don't we just agree that they'll change the hours here at Shaw? Mm-hmm. I said, they're not going to do that. Here come the naysayers. This is the way Shaw has been set up the whole time they've been here. They're never going to change that. 
Well, my first thought was, let's find out. So, do you know we started praying? I promise you, in three weeks, a notice was on the board. We're going to eight hour shifts, first, second, and third. Now, because I was kind of a newbie there, I had to start out on third shift. I wasn't there long. But I know what it's like, man, to, to, to work all night long. We had to be at church at, we had to be at church for praise and worship practice at 9 a.m. Well, I live, at the time I lived one hour exactly from my driveway to Shaw's parking lot was one hour. So I got off at seven in the morning, got home at eight, carried done up with the kids. <laughs> Got three boys. I remember they're little at this time. Three kids. I get there at eight. By the time I run in, take a shower. It's twenty after. We're twenty minutes from church. <laughs> so we're jumping in the car. Bam! I'm, I'm taking the fastest showers you ever saw in your life. Getting my clothes on, all that stuff. Headed to church. We get there about five minutes to spare. Whatever, ten minutes to spare. And uh, this went on for several months. Amen? And being up all night, I know what it's like. Being up all night, and plus, because I'm part of, uh, I wasn't on staff at the time yet, but still I was leadership, so they had me sitting on the front row there at the time. So I'm sitting on the front row there. Here's pastor preaching, and, and, and you have to understand, pastor back when he preached, uh, as he was preaching back then, can get very loud. <laughs> and uh, that strong voice he's got and has, Right now. As a matter of fact, write this scripture down. If you got you can write this scripture down. And uh, this is the scripture that Pastor Allen is standing on. It's Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. That's the scripture that he's standing on and, and asked us to confess over him and believe with him. And um, let me just read that to you real quickly. Um, Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Come on, get in there. There we go. Philippians chapter 3, 21. Now this is the King James. Uh, I've got this wrote out at home. I've got this wrote out in the NIV, the NLT, and the Message Bible. New Living Translation and the Message Bible and the New International Version. I'll read it out of the uh, King James. And it's uh, verse 21, Philippians three twenty-one. Who shall change our vile body? that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Praise God. So we're believing for God to totally change pastor's body. Praise God. Mm-hmm. Where it's, it's, it's 100% working properly. And um, he's been healed of the stroke. As you heard on, on the video, uh, it was hospital negligence. That, that caused him to, for his voice and things like that, that was due to hospital negligence. That wasn't due to the stroke. And um, so we're believing for total restoration in Pastor Allen's body, praise God. He drives, he texts, and he, <laughs> everything else. So, And Pastor Allen still drives like he always drove. Just ask Carrie, coming back from Texas, she was, well, last year when we were going to, when we went to the minister's conference, uh, she wasn't scared half that because we don't use that word. Uh, but she was she was uh, um, very aware <laughs> of how Pat Allen drives, and uh, and uh, she said we drive the same. So <laughs> that gives you any detail. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I don't drive nowhere like Pastor Allen does. Anybody that anybody that rides with Pastor Allen, if they're not born again, they're born again when they get out of that car. Let's just put it that way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because they see their life flash before them when they ride with Pastor Allen. <laughs> I love it. Praise God. But for your faith to work, you must trust God. Well, Pastor, you just sound so simple. That's because it is simple. It's simple, it's easy to trust. I saw a uh, I saw a church sign the other day. I was driving by it, and uh, what it say? It said something. It was something about faith, but it's unscriptural, and it's on church sign. <laughs> and uh, 
at something and said, God said faith would never be easy. And I was like, what do you think he gave us faith for? Because it is easy. All you do is simply trust him. Simply trust him. And I don't mind, I don't mind uh, uh, telling you these things, as I said this morning, as we were receiving this morning's offering. Um, man, when the rent's due, and, and the uh, uh, the rent's due, the, the light bill's due, um, and there's nothing there, well, what are you supposed to do? you got to pray it in. you got to stand on faith and don't get in fear and know that... that he called us to pray. He said, he said, River of Life, you're going to be, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And so it's about prayer. It's about standing in faith and, and believing. And so to the natural mind, it sounds like, well, I've had people leave the church and you're getting a bigger place. You're right. I ain't staying here. What do you mean? I'm, I'm saying I ain't staying in this condition. I'm not allowing these, like Tracy prophesied over, Tracy Harris prophesied over us. You don't let those four walls tell you who you are. And then the prophetic word, just Elaine, not too long ago, the prophetic word we got from Elaine, uh, not uh, just, just a couple of weeks ago, praise God. Standing on the word, praise God. And, and we're casting that net out, praise God. And uh, I, I believe the word, what Dick Mills said to, to the whole river of life. We're a river of life, so we're a part of that. And, and uh, Brother Dick Mills said, for every person that leaves an offense or leaves for the wrong reason, God is going to bring double back to your church. Brother Copeland said, spoke over us, over river of life, and said, river of life, you are now coming in to the double. Praise God. So I believe it. I receive it. I trust God. I trust Him at His Word. And, and I ain't going to give up. I ain't going to give up. You've got to trust God with your whole being. Yeah. Now, what I say to that, when I say trust God with your whole being, I mean everything. Yeah. People people all the time, uh, uh, I told God, I'm giving them all. But we'll find out. <laughs> God, God has all of me, except for that. <laughs> well, then he ain't got your all. Mm-hmm. He ain't got your all. I can say this because we've been through it. I've watched God bring us through it time and time again. When we didn't have nothing, we still gave. One thing we won't relent on, we won't give up on, is, is we're, we are tithers. Karen and I made the decision. We're tithers. Well, what about people that's got a? Uh, what about people that's on 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 a uh, that, that's getting a welfare check? What about what about them people? Well, do they want to stay in that condition, or do they want to get out? The way to get out is to sow. I'm telling you, the way to get out is to sow. And so God has God. When we say God has all, when Carrie and I made a commitment that God has all of us, we meant our pocketbooks too. We meant our finances. We've been in positions where everything we took out of our we took everything out of our bank account and gave it. Not just the church. Not not just the church or to a ministry, but to people. I remember one time we took a we got a uh, um, God told us to do it. We did it. Whenever I was unemployed for a few months, I took my hoe. Now listen, you got to listen to the voice of God, okay? You don't do it just because, oh, he done it, Pastor done it, I'll do it. No, no, you hear God's voice, okay? That's not what we're saying. It's the same thing with, with uh, uh, dealing with, in, in your body and with things like that. You just don't, you don't just go off because somebody else done it. Well, Brother So-and-so gave up all these mess, threw them in the garbage, and, and never took them. Well, if God told Brother So-and-so do that, <laughs> that was his faith. He listened to the voice of God, okay? So you don't do these things just because I did them. You listen to the voice of God. But there was, a, there was one point I had my unemployment check. wasn't very much. You know, back then, it was a lot to us back then. I signed it over. Put it in the offering. Praise God. Probably God told us to. Guess what? I wasn't employed, I wasn't employed but about, uh, unemployed but about another two weeks, and that was it. Then got me a job. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was because I sowed. Hallelujah. 
we gave a, we gave a, a Karen and I had a, uh, now we, we were getting a, we were getting a washing machine and dryer one time, but we had this couple years ago, years ago, and, uh, but we were still using our, our washing dryer. They needed a wash and dryer real bad. They had little babies and stuff, and, and, uh, and so God told us to give our wash and dryer. Well, what are we gonna do? We ain't got our new ones yet. <laughs> We gave our washer and dryer away. We just listened to the voice of God and obeyed God. That's the whole. That's the whole thing. Is obey God. Listen. Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are you gonna receive? I hear people all the time, and I'm trying to help you here. I hear people all the time. Listen, and they walk in what people have pronounced over them. All the time. You, you can you can come through life and, 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 and people call you dumb all your life. People will believe that. Well, I'm no good. They'll hear that all their life. And, and guess what? They believe it. That that's uh, there'll, there'll be a medical there'll be a, a medical report pronounced over them. What are they? What's usually what they say? I have. What that, you have it because <laughs> you've took it. Well, I have this, this. We had a couple. We had a couple at the home church, and uh, uh, they got up and testified. And they were both both couples. They 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 were uh, handy capable. Praise God. They said, "Don't ever call us handicapped. We're handy capable." Mm-hmm. They weren't going to listen. Uh, do, do you know this couple went on to to walk in their total healing? That was at the home church. That was a miracle right before our eyes. Because they kept confession, I'm handicapped. I ain't handicapped. They would not take the handicap sign, put it in their car. Now, if you do that, that's up to you. I'm, I'm just saying what they did. They didn't give them a handicap tag. They, get them, they didn't get them a handicap sticker. They refused to park in the handicap spots. They said, because we're, we're not, we're not going to be bound by that. We're not going to be bound what's been spoken over us. We're not going to be bound over what the doctor has spoken to us. We're going to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And do you know they, they walked their healing out, praise God? It took, it took a few years. But they come out of that, they come out of that, that uh, but they had MS and was healed, both of them, a couple, husband and wife, both of them healed of MS, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now they could have just walked on and done what the doctor said, or what the doctor had pronounced over them, or what medically was spoken over them. Well, I've got this disease. Well, I've got this wrong with me. I've got this mentally wrong with me. Well, you can accept that and walk it out, and then stay in it all you want, or you can come out of it and say, "No, that ain't who the Word of God says I am." The Word of God says I'm healed. Bless God, I'm standing up. The Word of God says I'm healed. And that ain't who I am. Praise God. That's not who I am. We didn't let that stuff be spoken over our kids. Whenever the teacher said, they're, well, they're, they're, no, they're, no, our children ain't slow. <laughs> this one right here can take you on a debate in politics you don't want to be on. And would put his he he would put his teacher to shame. <laughs> I remember Jordan getting online and, and uh, he would uh, he would get because uh, it was online, so they did these people didn't know. There's fifty, you know, thirty five year old, fifty year old man. Here's Jordan, twelve, thirteen years old, and spanking them in politics. Got, I think was it both of y'all, Jordan and Caleb, both of y'all received a presidential award and been that far back. <laughs> one of y'all, both of you did or one of you did, I can't remember. We got them home and all them trophies somewhere, but <laughs> we got boxes of trophies at home from not only from school but sports, for God. And they and, and and we we wouldn't let them. We wouldn't say no. You're not going to speak that over our kids. We begin speak. We begin speaking over our kids that our kids are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Praise God. What were we doing? And, and, and several other scriptures and other confessions we confessed over. We're not gonna. We're not gonna let our kids. 
be bound by that. We're not going to let that be spoken over our kids. Our kids are anointed young men of God. They're not brats. And let me help parents, okay? Watch what you say over your kids. Watch what you say over your kids. They hear it. Hear it. That old little devil. What you want him to be? My kids ain't going to be a little devil. My kids is going to be a man of God, praise God. I love what Elaine said, that the first words out of her mouth was Jesus. Her parents would not allow her to say mom or dad first. They taught her to say Jesus first. That was her first words off her lips, was the name Jesus. Praise God. Look at her today. Hallelujah. God. Trust Him with all your... When you say, I'm trusting Him with all my being, that means everything you have. Your, 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 your marriage, your finances, your relationship, you give Him all. When I say I give God my all, I mean I give Him my all. I don't withhold anything from Him. Why? He owns it all. God owns our house. God, God owns our cars. God, everything we have is His. Belongs to Him. It's his ministry. Praise God. This ain't my ministry. It's his ministry. I'm just a vessel he's using. Praise God. Jesus is always, this is to me, Jesus is always faithful and just. I know we're in a little bit different atmosphere this morning. Praise God. That's okay. We're in a good teaching atmosphere. Jesus is always faithful. First John 1 John 1.9 tells us that He is faithful and just to what? Forgive us of our sins. He is faithful and just. Uh, look at uh, Hebrews, uh, go to Hebrews chapter 3. Look at this one. Hebrews chapter 3. Praise God. We'll start rounding up here. I didn't say we're closing. I just say we're. Let's kid. We're rounding up. <laughs> Hebrews chapter three, verse one says, "Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession or our confession. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest." Of our confession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him. Talking about Jesus here. Who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was what faithful in all of his house. He was faithful to him. Great is thy faithfulness. I love that song. Great is thy faithfulness. We ought to sing it here. <laughs> it's one of them oldie but goodies, praise God. Great is thy faithfulness. God has never let us down. God's never let Carrie and I down. It, you have to go all the way back to Mark chapter 11, 22. When, when Jesus said, everybody say Jesus. Jesus said it. Have faith in God. That wasn't a suggestion. That was a commandment. Have faith in God. He didn't say it. Have, have, faith, have faith in your finances. Have faith in your bank. Have faith in your government. No, he said have faith. Why? All that's going to fade away. All that's going to let you down. Have faith in God. I remember several weeks ago watching that on, on Faith for the Nations. If you've watched it, you've, you, you've seen what I'm talking about. And, and, and they're talking about all the things going wrong in, in the politics and all that. And, and Pastor George Pearson said, he goes, so, so what do we do about that? And it kind of got quiet. And Brother Copeland simply looked at the camera and said, have faith in God. And that stern voice is, 
have faith in God. He got quiet on the set again. And there was silence. Brother David Barton, he says, well, I guess that's all we need to know. It's have faith. And that's all you need to know is have faith in God. No matter what's going on around you. It, 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 and when he says this, it's, it's a command to us to have faith in Him. And this is the place that God is trying to get us to today. Where we are walking by faith and not by sight. What do you mean walking by sight? That means we're looking at everything going on around. We're, we're looking at, well, we're paying more attention to what the TV is saying. We're paying more attention to what the newspapers are saying. We're paying more attention to what social media is saying. That's the worst thing in the world you can even look at in the first place. That's worse than newspapers, social media. Because number one, where do these people get their information from? Who do they know they got their information from? Well, I, you, always, you always hear this. You always hear this. They say, well, they say, who's they? <laughs> Somebody tell me. <laughs> well, they say coffee's going to be nine pounds. Of, yeah, nine dollars a pound. Well, do you know anybody in Brazil? You know about anybody in the coffee business in Brazil? <laughs> you know about anybody in the coffee business? Where'd they get their information from? <laughs> well, I saw. Where, where'd you see it at? Some crazy stuff. We believe it rather than we do the Word of God. We believe it rather than we do. I don't care how bad the economy gets. I care. Don't get me wrong. I don't care about the world's economy because I'm not in that economy. I'm not in that kingdom. I don't care what kind of bird flu, pig flu, zebra flu, camel flu. I don't care what kind of flu, what kind of disease is out there. It's not going to come near this body. We take our face shot, praise God. We take our face shot. Isaiah 53, 5. Praise <laughs> so when it gets flu season, well, they say it, well, flu season. You ever listen to yourself? Because I, I, here, here's some things I've learned. I've learned these. Man, these are just things I've learned. I go back now and I go, How, why did I say this stuff? Because I didn't know no better. The truth hadn't set me free yet. I had to learn, the, I had to know the truth, and the truth set me free. And and uh, I was always going around with this, you know. Uh, well, it's this time of year. This is this is whenever I get so stuffed up. Well, guess what? Every time that year came around, I was stuffed up. But I'm not no more. Why? I learned the truth. It set me free. I don't say that no more. Guess what? I don't get stuffed up no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, every time I eat this, I know I'm going to get heartburn. Well, don't eat it. Or keep on saying it and it keep on happening to you. Now, you know, in the natural, you keep cramming habaneros down your throat. It's... <laughs> For some people, they could eat through that stuff like candy and they don't even bother. And we put a test one time to a guy. <laughs> he bragged all the time how hot he could eat. They can't nothing bother him. Can't nothing hurt him. And uh, praise God, I'm standing here before you today and I'm not in jail for murder. But it didn't matter how hot it was. He could eat it. He's not ate one thing that was too hot for him. Well, I got a little bottle of stuff that you had to sign a waiver for and didn't tell him. And I put one single drop in his chili at work. <laughs> he went to the hospital. But 
And it was called, I believe it was called Hell Hath No Fury what was the name of it. And he went to hot he he whelps came up on his body. <laughs> and I thought we were gonna praise God nobody know who done it. So I'll have to cut that part out of the tape. It was me. But guess what? What a man sows shall a man reap. One night and I'm closing. Give you some hope. I'm I'm closing. So we're at a hallelujah night church. <laughs> and uh everybody we they were having a chili cook off. So they had had a chili cook off. And um you understand that this stuff is called a toothpick taste uh toothpick test. You can dip it in a toothpick, the bottom of a toothpick in some of this stuff, and let it touch your tongue and, and you think you've died and went to hell. And so we had this chili cook off, and I was kind of bragging about, well, I, I hadn't, none of this chili's hot. Because we're supposed to be, we're supposed to have the hottest chili, you know, what was the best chili, and then we had a section for the hottest chili. I was like, none of this chili's hot, and I was eating it. I was like, none of this chili's really hot. And Dr. Turner goes out to his vehicle, and he says, let's just see if we can fix this right now. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what he had. And he sat there and Went like that in my chili. He goes, now eat that, big boy. <laughs> Son, I thought I was falling out in the Holy Ghost. They gonna, I thought they were going to have to carry me out on the stretcher. But I got it right back to me. <laughs> and it was hot and it was just a drop, man. And I'm telling you, I'll never forget that. And, and it was. The first thing that came to my mind was, oh, my God. That was the first. That was, that was the thing I did to Shannon when he was sitting there eating his chili at work. <laughs> Praise God! But we're still here today. Glory to God. We're not in jail. Nobody's dead. He lived through it. Praise God. He was able to come back to work later on that day. But uh, nobody know who done it. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you, I was a rascal. I was a Christian back then too, but I just thought it was funny to do something like that. But I've, I've grown up. I've grown up since then. Anything Jesus says, anything, I'll close with this, anything Jesus says is a command. Anything Jesus says to us in his word, red letters, is a command to us. One more scripture. <clears throat> no, I'll hold that. I'm going to hold that to next week. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to hold that to next week. Faith is faith, faith is faith is the spiritual creative force. Faith is the spiritual creative force of God that's inside your born again spirit. It's already inside you. When you got born again, you had to have faith to get born again. We went over this last week. But you had to have faith in order to get born again. And it's that same faith that you use to get born again. So you believe God for everything. Now, now, now it's like Lego blocks. You start building on that faith. Everybody's got the same measure of faith. We start out with the same measure of faith. Some people stay at kindergarten level with it. They've been in church for 30, 40 years. And they're still at kindergarten level. I know people today. The denominational church we used to go to don't know nothing about no what, what what you guys are getting, and I don't say just here at River Live, but, but I mean through Brother Copeland and, and things like that. They've never heard it. They're still at a kindergarten level. I love my mom and dad with all my heart. Mom and dad are wonderful Christians, but it's just like with tithing. They've tithed all these years. But don't know the importance of tithing. And can I tell you about this, Mama? Even though my mom and dad don't know the importance of tithing, I learned, I learned this from my mom and dad. That no matter what, my mom and dad paid their tithes. And there was sometimes we kind of went through some rough times. But for the most part, you know, I, I, 
when I met Carrie, I was spoiled. You know? <laughs> we weren't super rich. But I was. We were comfortable, and you know, I could say, "Can I get this, Dad?" Yeah, you know, not as long as it wasn't nothing, you know, major. You know I'm saying, but I always had something. If I wanted, I could get it, and um, we lived comfortable. But we had, we hit. There was a time we hit a couple hard spot, hard spots uh, uh, growing up, and um, but mom and dad never stopped tithing. And I watched that. Now, on the flip side of that, mom and dad never knew why they tithed. <laughs> they were just supposed to do it. It was the thing to do. But they never knew about covenant rights. Never knew about tither rights. They never knew about the windows of heaven being. But but you know what? During that, even though through that ignorance, we were still blessed. Why? The, the blessing was in operation. It had to be. We, we were we were tithers. We were givers. Mom and dad were giver, givers and tithers. And, and, and didn't know why they done it. We, it was just a thing to do. You're supposed to do that. Well, they had one part right. Yeah, you are. You are supposed to do that. But they didn't understand what tithers rights were. They didn't understand why they gave except for you're supposed to. And that's all they knew. But my parents are still blessed. Praise God. Still got both my parents, glory to God, and, and uh, they'll have a little battle here and there, but uh, guess who they call? At one at one point, and, and, and this ain't bad how I say because I don't want it to sound like it was bad, but, but at one point, I was a little bit of the black sheep of the family. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, out of the denomination I came out of, <laughs> I was sort of the black sheep of the family. But the day, some, but, but but the day, some, but over the years, whenever something major would happen in the family or, or to one of them, guess who they called? They called their son because I was going to get a hold of God. Why? Because I testify all the time around my parents. I testify uh, this Thanksgiving. I'll hear it again. They always bring it up. My past, not my parents, my brothers. It never fails to happen, especially if we've got somebody new there in the family now. They have to make sure, yeah, you old you now. Let me tell you about what he done. And they got to go into my past. You know, I sit there and just laugh and smile and say, well, praise God, that's not me no more, glory to God. I'll never forget the day, and I've told this story before, I'll never forget the day whenever all my, everybody in my family has had back surgeries. My mom's had back surgery. My dad's had back surgery. Both of my brothers have had back surgeries and dealing with back problems now. And I'll never forget a, a Thanksgiving dinner we were having a, several years back now. I remember my little brother. You can talk to Carrie. It's by faith she loves him. Very arrogant. Very arrogant. Worse than I, I mean, she thinks he was worse than that. I said, he probably is. But I was arrogant back then. But he's more arrogant than I am. And uh, it just takes, it, it, me being his blood brother takes faith to love him. And I'll never forget him turning to me saying, well, Mr. Spiritual Guy, how come you don't have no back problems? And I was like, how everybody said, glad you asked. Because I took authority, that's under the curse. That's what I told him. I said, because I turn the curse, and I'm not under the curse. Isaiah 53, 5 says I'm healed, and that's the scripture I stand on. That's why. Now, guess what? Does the temptation for back problems come to me? Yes. I've turned a certain way before. I've got up out of bed before and felt that tingling. At that moment, at that the opportunity or receive. When that little twinge hits, I can either go, oh, man. Oh, I can say, that hurt. When I say that hurt, guess what? He's got me. When I have that twinge now, it's, uh-uh. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going on. Can't touch this. <laughs> Where's my parachute pants, Lord? <laughs> no, 
That song does come to my head whenever I when I, I do. I tell the devil, so you can't touch this. I'm blo- I am bought by the. I'm not kidding. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus. I'm healed and made whole. You can't touch this, devil. That ain't mine. That ain't my back problems, and I'm not going to receive them. Hallelujah. And so I'm serious. I'm serious with the devil. You have to be, or he'll eat your lunch. You have to let him know who has the authority here. Well, God's in control. No, he's not. You in control. God gave you dominion. He gave you dominion. That's what he gave you this mouth for. That's what he gave you the word for so you can see how to overcome the things in your life today. That's what he gave you the faith for. To overcome. Praise God. And we're overcomers, aren't we? Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning.